I'm really good at starting series, that is what I've learned. I am excellent at starting series and not so good at finishing them. My loves and thank you for joining me it's Kirsten and today we're talking about all the book series that I am in the middle of. I will give you some quick statistics but I'm only going to go through the series that I'm either already caught up on or in the series that I need to continue. I'm not going to talk about the series that I've DNF'd this year or that I've completed although to be fair there's not many of those. As of 2023 I have completed three book series two of which were ebook, and then I have DNF'd four series in 2023. Out of all of that, I am still in the middle of 40 series. So we're gonna have to go through this. This is gonna be a long video. We're gonna start with the book series that I'm all up to date with, which means that I've read everything that is out currently, but there is going to be new books coming out eventually, still technically in the middle of them, and then we'll tackle all the ones that I need to hurry up and finish. I'm really good at starting series, that is what I've learned. I am excellent at starting series and not so good at finishing them, but I think you get the idea of all of this, so let's get straight into it, and do let me know if you've read any of these series, if you're in the middle of them, if you've finished them, how are you doing? Are you like me where you're terrible at starting loads and not continuing or do you finish them really easily? Like do you read them back to back? Definitely how I used to be, now not so much. Let's stop procrastinating and let's get straight to this. A book series that I started this year is new out this year so I have read everything that is currently out. It is The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. I really enjoyed this, this was a really fun time. You haven't seen me talk about it that much on this channel. There is a video that this is coming out in, I think after this video so I'm not going to talk about it here. But safe to say I'm very excited to continue on with this series but it is going to be a little while yet. This is the first book and it only got released in May but it was a grand old time. We then have a couple of the Yishwab books. The first one is A Darker Shade of Magic. This is a trilogy. I've read all three books, really enjoyed them but she is doing, I don't know whether it's a companion series or a continuation, I'm not sure how it's going to go. It's set in the same world and that book is called Threads of Power and I believe that one comes out later this year. As it stands, I have read everything in this trilogy. It's a really fun trilogy. Fantasy looks at different worlds. So you have someone that is able to travel between different Londons. So they're all set on top of each other. And depending on what London you're in, depends on the level of magic that is there. It's a really fun, fast paced adventure story. And I love our characters in this. Lila and Kel, they're two, like the dynamics between them is fantastic. Currently V Schwab is actually doing a video series here on YouTube where she is going over her books in preparation for Threads of Power that's coming out. And I would really recommend that series, especially if if you've read these books and you want to recap, she's going through part by part of her books, what happens, what she was thinking about when she was writing it. It's a really, really good series. She's just finished A Darker Shade of Magic and she'll be moving on to the next two. I'll have her link linked below so you can have a little look. And then another series of hers is the Vicious series. Now I'm holding up Vengeful because I'm currently rereading Vicious, um, but there is going to be a third book in this series. I can't wait. V. Schwab is definitely like an auto by author for me, like I love all of her work. Vicious is kind of like more of an X-Men style book. Something that V. Schwab does is that every book she writes, she writes for someone different. So not everyone is going to get on with all of her different books. I genuinely do. I like all of them. I like the diversity and the range that she has in her ability to write. This series is kind of dark academia-esque. We have these two students who become obsessed with extraordinaries, with creating extraordinaries, proving that they're real. It gets dark. It's a morally grey book, 100%. Really enjoyed it. And there is going to be a third book, which I'm very excited for. I, I think it's going to be a good time and I really want to see what happens with Victor because at the end of the second book, it's really open-ended and I'm just like, I, I want to know what happens to him. And it's been a while, so I'm really pleased that we're coming back into this world. I don't know when the release date on that is, but you can bet your bottom dollar that once I get it, or once it's announced, I will be ordering it because going to be a good time. We then have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mars. I really like this series. I have to admit the first three books are not actually my favourite. It is the more recent book A Court of Silver Flames which is my absolute favourite and there is going to be another book following 
the other sister. To give you a brief overview of this, this is a kind of like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. We're following Feyre and she ends up in the Fey world because she killed a Fey, hate in her heart, and so she has to go and live with them. There's trials and stuff. I would say that this, this first book is not my favourite. The second book in the series is definitely better, but yeah, I've read everything that she's put out and this is definitely one that is going to be continued on with the series. The book that I love the most, A Court of Silver Flames, follows Feyre's sister, Nesta, and and I do believe the next one is going to be following their other sister, Elaine. Really intrigued to see how that's all going to go, but yeah, I love it. Love Sarah Jo Miles, I'm sure you've seen this series around before. We then have House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. I honestly thought that this was a standalone, but she is bringing out a book, is it in July or August? L very, very soon for this um, as a continuation. This is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling, and I enjoyed it. I really liked this spooky, haunted vibe. I don't know whether we actually needed a second book, but I will be getting it and reading it, and I will let you know my thoughts on that. So as this has become a series, I will be, of course continuing on. Okay, then we have a series which I know in my heart of hearts is probably never going to be finished, and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I love this series so much. It's meant to be a trilogy. We have the first two books. It's been about 15 plus years now since the second book's come out. We're still waiting on the third book. I don't know if we're ever going to get it. However, there has been some talk of the fact that Patrick Rothfuss is coming out with another novella because alongside this book there is two little novellas. I've read both of them and apparently we're getting a third one. Not sure if it's coming out this year or what's happening around it. It's been quite hush hush. I've only seen a little like things here and there. I don't know if we're ever going to actually finish this series but so far every everything that is out I have read. This is a really good epic fantasy series, beautiful writing. We're following our main character Gavoth. His parents die and he tries to find out what's happened to them, what causes it. Alongside all of this he goes off to this school which trains him in a little bit of magic but mainly around like mechanics and it's, it's fascinating. It's a good series. It's one of my favourite fantasy series. Like if you read this book you will know the sort of fantasy that I absolutely adore. Some people don't enjoy this book. They find Gavoth a really frustrating main character is very full of himself. It is all from his perspective. He's telling his tale as a much older man to this traveling writer and each book is a day that he is telling his story. And I, I really enjoy it. I think it's really fun. I, my copy is so old and battered. Like the pages are yellowed. There is, there is so much love because I've read this book so many times. I, I love this series. I am trying to do this semi quick because of the amount of books we've got to get through. So I'm sorry if these reviews aren't in depth. If you would like any more in depth like reviews on these, then let me know and I'll see if I can do some videos on that. We do have a lot to get through. The next series is The Way of Kings. This is actually the Stormlight Archive. The first book is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson and this is set out to be a 10 book long series. So far four books are out. I love this series. It's epic fantasy. It's explosive. It's set in the Cosmere. It has little links to his other books that are set in the Cosmere but essentially it boils down to this is a war story. You have the Alethi, I think it's the Alethi, on one side and then you have the Parshendi on the other side and they are at war with one another. You follow lots of different main characters. There is magic in here. The way it's all explained is really interesting. It's to do with many different things. It is, it's a really good fantasy, epic fantasy series. I highly recommend if you like epic fantasy. Each book is about 1200 pages long. I am in the middle of my reread of this series. I actually reread the first book, The Way of Kings. Um, I have the split pack editions, which is why it seems so small, but I reread this first one. I do need to continue on because I want to read it so that by the time I finish the fourth book, the fifth one is coming out. So I need to get back on that reread as well. I have so many things I need to read, but yeah, this is really good. I love how immersive it is. If I reread this one, I've read this first one, I think like three times now, maybe four. Every time I read it, I pick up on other things which are little hints to what's going to happen later in the series or hints to his other book. It's a really good world. I, I love it. We then have Vita Nostra and this is by Marina and Sergei Dashenko. This book has been translated by Julia metov Hersey. I'm sorry with pronunciations. This is by Ukrainian authors. It was written in Russian and then translated to English. It is a dark academia weird book and if you know me you know that that's that's all I needed to know when I was reading this. I actually read this as an audiobook the first time and I liked it but I wasn't sure how much I liked this book which is weird but that was a few years ago and the longer I've sat with it the longer I've liked this and so I decided to get the physical copy and then I found out that a second book was coming out. Now I don't know if it's actually available in the UK yet or not which if it is obviously I need to move this into a series that I haven't caught up with. I don't think it's out yet but I could be wrong. But either way this is a really good weird dark academia book for people that like 
funny. Weird's the only word that I can give you for this, but it, it was a fun time. And then Ninth House by Leo Bardugo. This is, again, arguably a Dark Academia book. This is her first adult series, and I'm enjoying it. I read the second book, Hellbent, as an ebook. I will be getting the paperback to match my paperback when it is available. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see where it's going from here. I think, I'm not sure how much I like the direction it's going in. Like, I really enjoyed this first book with the darker vibes. We're following our main character. She gets accepted into university but only because she's able to see ghosts. In this university they have underground kind of like cults where focus on using arcane abilities, so tapping into the other side to get different things and she is there to kind of keep them in order, make sure that what they're doing doesn't cause problems for other people which of course it ends up doing. I really enjoyed this first book. The second book I don't think I like quite as much but we'll see how it goes with the rest of the series. I don't know how long this series is going to be either. We then have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a cozy fantasy that took YouTube, TikTok, Instagram by storm. It's really really lovely. Nothing really happens in this. We're following an orc who decides to open up a coffee shop and so you get beautiful descriptions of coffee and pastries and it's really heartwarming found family. This is going to be a series. There's actually a prequel that's coming out later this year. Bookshops and Bone Dust I think. So again I'm just expecting more of that cozy fantasy. It, it was lovely. This was originally independently published and then it was picked up by Tor and it's been doing really well. Highly recommend for something just really really cozy and a chill time. Don't go into this expecting much plot wise because there isn't much. Then of course we have Crescent City by Sarah J Mars. I really loved this book. This is House of Earth and Blood. This was her first official adult fantasy book and I really really enjoyed it. The second book has a lot of people split especially with the ending. I'm intrigued to see the third book how it's going to go. I believe this is only meant to be a trilogy so I'm interested to see whether it stays that way because I mean A Court of Thorns and Roses was only meant to be a trilogy and then that got expanded upon. I think she's also just signed a deal for quite a few more books as well so we're gonna see. This one is adult fantasy, it's urban fantasy and you have a mixture of vampires, mermaids, werewolves, fae, like there is everything chucked into this book and when I first read it I was not that intrigued. I dithered on buying this book a lot because when I first went to pick it up I was reading the first few pages and the amount of swear words in this I was like I don't know I don't know if this is for me because I don't particularly like swear words in books like not that much but I then caved, I bought it and I then fell in love with it. This is arguably, between this and A Court of Silver Flames is one of my favourite books actually. I mean if you're on this channel you know that I'm trash for Sarah J Maas. Uh, always have been, always will be. I've been a fan of hers for a very long time because I started reading her works when she was first publishing the Throne of Glass series. Like I think I started it when that first book was published so I know, I know she's not for everyone but she is for me. A new favourite book, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This is by Heather Fawcett and this is the start of a new series. We have the second book. The title's been released. I'm not sure. I think it's released in January as well. So excited. This is cosy fantasy, light academia, and it's all about fairies. And we're following our main character, Emily, and she is setting out to create the world's first encyclopedia of fairies. She goes off into this really secluded town in search of these very elusive fae. She does not get on well with the people there. She She's not good at people skills. Like she's very good at science. She's not so good at people skills. And her colleague ends up coming along with her and she gets really frustrated with him. It's a cute little, I wouldn't say it's enemies to lovers, but definitely like grumpy, reluctant acquaintances to lovers. And you've got all the fairy side of this. Like honestly, it's one of my favourite books of this year. I, I loved this. This was absolutely amazing. And then another new release was God Killer by Hannah Kenner. And this is the start of a series. I am really intrigued by this one. So much happens in such a short amount of time, but I really, really enjoyed this book. There is a lot of representation in here and we have gods and god killers. So we're following a perspective of a god killer. She then comes across this god that she can't kill because it's linked to this girl and there is a lot that goes alongside this. It is fast paced, there is a lot that happens, but I, I really, really enjoyed it and I think it's a really good setup book for the rest of the series. Plus this, this is just so beautiful. Look how stunning this is. And even the end pages. It's the reason why I bought the book. 
I could not say no to this. We then have Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club. This is a murder mystery series that I really, really enjoy. I actually buddy read this series with Christina. We buddy read the last book when it came out, the third one, and really enjoyed it. We said we're gonna buddy read the fourth book. It's just such a fun series. It's got very English dry humor in it, which I love. We're following a murder mystery club of these four elderly people that all live in the same care home, go over cold cases in their little murder club that they have and then an actual murder happens on their doorstep so of course the four of them set about solving it. It's so much fun. I love this series. It's really really good and it's a feel good one for me. I started this series at a time when I was in a massive reading slump. I was extremely stressed and it got me through that. I adore this series so much. We then have The Beautiful and this is by Renee Adier. It's actually been a few years since the last book came out. We are expecting a fourth book but I don't know when that's actually going to be. I love this first book. This is a vampire book that's set in New Orleans. Yeah in 1872 we're following our main character Celine and she is running away from her past and then she gets caught up in the dark underbelly. The main complaints that people had about this book is that there wasn't explicit vampires but it is in there. Like you have it all in the atmosphere, the way it's written. It's not explicit, oh my god these are vampires, but the way it is is like you know they're vampires. You, you know they're there. I loved this first book. The next two in the series kind of take like a complete 360 to this. It's a lot more explicit. You get vampires and fae and lots of other creatures that are involved. I want to get the fourth book and finish out this series. Each book focuses on a different main character as well but I have to admit The Beautiful was my favourite. I loved the dark decadence of this book. And then we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garbar. This is one of my favourite YA series. I love this. We have a third book that is due out. Is it later this year? Might be later this year. I am so excited for this. But I love this series. It is so whimsical and it is a bit like sugary to the point of extreme sugariness, which probably is a weird description, but if you've read it, you, you kind of get it. But I love it for that. I really love it for just the fun, whimsical vibes of a book that is just so ridiculously sweet just for the sake of being ridiculously sweet. And at the end of the second book, it left in such a way that I was like, no, how could you do this? I need to know what's going on. So you can guarantee I will run in out to the shops to get this. And one thing that I love about these books is that underneath each of the dust jackets, you get a hidden gilded cover. There are four different designs. So I love going to the shops and finding the design. It's why I won't pre-order these though, because I want to choose my design from what they have available. But yeah, anyway, I love this series. We're following Evangeline. It does tie into her other series, which is Carval, but it's done in a way where you could read these separately if you wanted to. It just has little tidbits towards the other series, but yeah. I love this. It's so good. It's so good. That's all the book series that I am up to date on. Now we have the book series that I'm really not up to date on. Okay, starting off with Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford. I loved this book. You would have seen me speaking about this recently. It's It was great. Absolutely fantastic. Naomi got this for my birthday. I actually ended up reading this one very quickly, which is quite surprising for me. This was fantastic. This is an epic fantasy, but with steampunk vibes, and we're following four well, five main characters that all revolve around the same family, a head of a guild within an empire that is kind of falling apart and there is danger on all sides, everything's going wrong. I need to get the second book and continue it. The second book only came out this year, I think. Absolutely fantastic book. Highly, highly recommend. I'm not going to sit here talking about it loads because you would have seen it in my book haul video, you would have seen it in my vlogs, you would have seen it in my wrap up. It's everywhere. We then have a book which is very short very cozy and this is The Pig in the Derby Hat by M.A. Knights. This is available on Kindle Unlimited. I decided to get a physical copy just because I know that this is a book I'm going to pick up whenever I'm feeling a little bit down or I just want a really quick read and this is the first book in a murder mystery series that investigates paranormal happenings. It is really cozy, really fun. In this first book we're following a main character where her nan is acting really strange, like things keep happening to her and she's not sure what's going on and she stumbles into this man who's like hmm I think I know what's going on and ropes her into this investigation. It's just a fun little time to be honest. If you ever have a spare hour and you don't know what to read I would recommend picking these up. They are a fun time. 
but there is I think three out at the minute and I've only read the first one. We then have Master of Sorrows and this is by Justin Cool. This is a fantasy which I did really like. It's a slow setting. It's a slow start up to a fantasy series but we're looking at a villain's origin story. The second book is out. I have it. It's on my shelves. I just haven't got around to reading it and I think the third book comes out later this year. So I need to get a wiggle on and actually continue this series. I don't know why I've been putting it off because I know I like this series but for some reason I just don't think about picking this series up but it was a really good time. It's also a series I don't see many people talking about. It was actually Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction, I'll have her linked below, that was speaking about this series and she fell in love with this series that made me go out and pick it up and I did really like it. It's along the same vein as The Name of the Wind. We're following this person who is growing up in a society where magic and disabilities are not allowed. The person feels very conflicted about this because he has grown up with magic. He sees it from both sides. So I feel like is this going to be a villain origin story but he's not actually a villain? But the ending of this makes you question that maybe he is a villain. Like I'm really intrigued. I think it's a really interesting setup. I like the magic of this. There are trials that go on as well. It's got everything but for some reason I just never feel inclined to continue the series but I need to. I need to kick up the butt to actually read this series because I think the second book is going to be better. The way it ends, ends in such a way that you want to continue on, but this first one I think was just a bit slow, a bit meandering, but you need that to set up the world, I think. Then we have The Ninth Rain, and this is by Jenna Williams. This is a book I really want to continue the series of, but I've been struggling to find the second book. I can find the third book in shops, not a problem. The second book, cannot find anywhere. I think eventually I'm just going to have to buy it off Amazon which is a bit frustrating because I don't like to buy it off of Amazon if I can help it but sometimes it's the only place that's got the books available. This one is a really fascinating epic fantasy world. I picked this one up because of Elliot Brooks but also Abby has also been reading this. She's actually, I think she's read the second book now. She really enjoys it. I have both channels linked below. Definitely give Abby a follow. She's a great YouTuber and this one we're following a couple of different perspectives but we have human world and we have the city of Abora which used to glitter in gold and was absolutely beautiful and we had these fae like creatures however there is now tension between humankind and the fae like creatures because the fae like creatures their power has faded and so to stay long live they've had to basically transform themselves into vampires they now need human blood to survive so obviously that's put a strain on the relationships you also have witches in here the way that the witches are kept they, I mean it's terrible conditions and you have a human a fae and a witch that end up joining up together and the start of this war that's going to happen which comes around every so often which is referred to as the rains. It's a really really good series. I really need to continue on with it. We then have the First Law trilogy. I'm holding up the third book because Eric's loaned me this book to read. I really liked The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. That was the first book. I found it on Kindle Unlimited. I actually need to do this because I've had this for a couple months now so I actually need to get around to reading this one. This is a grim dark series. We're following three different perspectives. You do actually have more perspectives but you have three main ones. One of them is a torturer who was himself tortured. One of them is an aristocrat that is a pompous ass and the other one is Wildman let's say he's from the north and in this book we're following a kind of the way I kind of set it out in my mind is that this is England you have the wild men in the north which is Scotland and they're attacking them and wanting to go to war and then you have people cross the water so either like Ireland or France depending on there's no map in this so I could not tell you which direction this is coming from but they're also wanting to go to war so you have the place that we're in the middle of stuck with these two sides at war with one another there's also sort of Magic in this. You do have a magus in here but I don't think it's a central theme. A lot of it's actually politics and looking at war, the futility of war. I actually really enjoy this series. Like not a lot happens. It's not a plot heavy driven book. It is a character driven book but I'm enjoying it. I think it's a grand old time so I need to actually get on and read this third book. Another one obviously because we are still going is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is his YA sci-fi series. I've read the first two books. My mum has also read the first two books. It was really fun actually to have her reading them as well and then like being able to talk about it. But the next book to read is actually I have the third but I have been told that I should read a collection of short stories that kind of goes between the second and third book which shows what Skyward Flight has been up to without 
our main character, Spencer, and she has gone away. There's lots of things that have happened. And so we're seeing what's happened while she's not been away, which then gives more context for the third book. I think it's actually going to be a quartet. Either way, I need to continue on with this series. This is really fun. I actually really enjoy this as a YA sci-fi. We're following Spencer. Her father was a fighter pilot. Being a fighter pilot is the best thing that you can be. Unfortunately, he's heralded as a traitor. As a result, she has a really bad rap, but she manages to get into the flight academy against all expectations to find all odds and then we find out that the alien race that they've been in war against well there's more going on than what we first thought then we have one of my favorite series the mask of mirrors by m.a carrick m.a carrick is actually two authors together one of them is marie brennan who i've since read more of their work and i, I love marie brennan and alec helms which i've not read any of their books apart from this one. This is a really fun time. This is set in Edwardian times. It's kind of got that kind of setting in a fantasy world. We're following our main character. She is a thief, con artist, and she is trying to con her way into high society of this world so that she can pay for her sister so that they don't have to live on the street. So she's doing this long con. You also have magic in here that's around tarot cards. You have a vigilante that's going on. There is so much, like there's so many threads to this book, but I really, really enjoyed it. And the second book, I need to get on a read. The third book comes out in August. I need to read the second book soon. I love this series. It's really good. I don't see many people talking about it. Would highly recommend. If you know, again, sort of series of fantasy books that I like and you know that you like that sort of thing as well, I would recommend The Mask of Mirrors. It is a lot of fun. And talking about Marie Brennan, we have A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent. So the Lady Trent series is so good. It's Jane Austen with dragons and I say that every single time because it's true. I love of this. We're following Lady Trent as she's writing her memoirs. So we're looking back on her life and we're seeing the things that she did. Studying dragons is so good. It is so good. I've read the first two books. I really need to continue. It's something that every time I go into these books, I enjoy. We also get beautiful illustrations and they go alongside the story of what's happening because Lady Trent is an artist. And so you get a lot of her scientific drawings alongside all of this. This book is about dragons as a science. They are trying to understand them so some of the stuff that happens is them dissecting a dragon because that's what they're trying to understand about them, understand their nature and stuff in the name of science. Because of the more science-based things of this not everybody would get on with it but I, I loved this book. I loved the science in it. I loved time that it was written in, the priory and society that goes on alongside this which is why it reminds me of Jane Austen. I love this series. It's great. I could talk about this series for a very long time and I have spoken about it many times on this channel. We then have The Stranger Times by C.K. McDonald. This is a book that my dad got me into actually. He really loves this series and I can 100% understand why. It is such a fun series. We're actually following a newspaper which is called The Stranger Times and they report on the weird and wonderful happenings and maybe those ghost stories are actually true. This is so funny and it incorporates a lot of the classic horrors. It is so much fun. If you need a fun book that's going to make you laugh, that has a bit of a mystery to it. Pick up this. It is a really good time but I need to actually continue on with the rest of the books. I have the second and third. I actually need to get on with that. That is the point of this video is calling me out on all the series that I need to continue. A YA murder mystery series, Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I thought this was just going to be a trilogy but it is continuing on. So technically it's a trilogy that I have read but we have another mystery that our main character Stevie is trying to solve which carries on in the box in the woods and there's also another book that's been put out which is Nine Liars. This was a really fun series. We have Stevie that her goal is to become Sherlock Holmes, applies to go to this very elusive school. It's a unique school that allows children to study what they want because the children that go there are incredibly smart. So for instance, we have an author that's already going there at a very young age. You have somebody that is incredible with science and is like developing new things at an advanced level. And Stevie gets in because she says to them, the mystery around this school, because there is a whole mystery of something that's happened to the founder of this school I'm going to solve and so she gets in. This is told in two different timelines. You get the previous timeline of what happened on the lead up to the events that surround the mystery of this school and then you have the present day and each book you have a different mystery that Stevie's solving alongside the overarching mystery of the school. I really enjoyed it. It's a fun time. 
can't wait to continue with the series. We then have The City of Ghosts by V. Schwab. This is her middle grade series and it is completed. I just haven't continued on with it. I read the first one, thought it was really cute, really fun. We're following the main character who can see ghosts. It's just a cute time. I need to continue with this series. I think the reason why I've left it for such a long time is because not often I'm in the mood for middle grade, but it is a fun, quick read. And I think picking up something like this for when I'm doing my Tack Your TBR readathons is a really good idea because they're so easy to read. So I need to get on and finish this. Like I was debating, do I want to DNF this series? But actually I do want to continue with it. So I need to get the second book. We then have The Way With Children series. This is by Shauna Maguire. I love this series. Again, this is a series you've seen me talking about for a very long time. I really enjoy it. Each one is very short. They're all novellas and each one is focusing on a different thing around childhood, acceptance, finding who you are, and they're all portal fantasies. Odd numbers are continuations from the first book. Even numbers tend to be prequels. I really enjoy this series. It's just fun. I have one book, two books that I need to read, and then I think there's going to be more books coming out as well. We then have The Madman's Daughter. This is by Megan Shepherd. I really enjoyed this first book. I'm struggling to find the second book. I'm being a bit fussy with the covers to be fair. I think I found one on Amazon which is not a cover I love but it's at a decent price point. This I don't know whether it's just not in print anymore or what's gone on with it but I don't see anyone talking about it. I found this randomly in a charity shop but this is the daughter of Dr Moreau. So Dr Moreau is a very scary gothic book about this person who goes onto an island and he's changing animals into humans. It's really horrible experimentations and we're following his daughter as she travels to the island, finds out what's happening. You can read this as a standalone but the second book I think we then start focusing in on like Frankenstein and I'm really intrigued. I love books that are retellings of our horror classics. It's just it's a good time. I, I really really love this. I, I liked it. I was very pleased with it. I really want to get the next book in the series. Then we have Aurora Rising which is a YA sci-fi series. YA sci-fi is not something that I gravitate towards all the time but I did enjoy this book. It reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy with a little splash of Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer in there. It was a fun time. We have a found family trope going on. We're following Squadron they're in this flight academy, there are a bunch of misfits that all get thrown together and they get caught up in some politics that's going on because of someone that they end up saving. This girl that she saved from a chirogenic sleep, things go out from there. I have the second book, I need to read it, and then the third book, it is just a trilogy so I just need to finish it up. We then have The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper and this is a book that is kind of inspired by, is it Roman mythology? We're following Amara and she gets so Sold off to the wolf den which is a brothel and you'll see how women are treated back then. I liked this series, I don't remember loads about it. I say series, I've only read the first book. There is I think two books more books out now. It's one that I can't decide if I'm going to continue on with or not. I think I'll hang on to it for a little bit longer before I decide whether I'm going to continue the series or not. It's not one that I see many people talking about. I think this is one that if you've read you'll have to let me know whether it's worth continuing on with because I'm in two minds about this one. We then have The Lord of the Rings. So I read The Fellowship of the Ring in May and I liked it. I listened to it as an audiobook. I was also reading physically alongside. The audiobook is the way to go with this series in my personal opinion. I loved it. It really brought it to life with all the songs and everything that goes with it. I would imagine most people know what this is. This is a classic epic fantasy series. It's inspired so many different books and I need to read the next two. It's gonna take me a long time. This isn't a high priority series for me but I'm really pleased that I've started it. We then have Dangerous Remedy by Kat Dunn. This is a Frankenstein and French Revolution inspired book. Really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I have read the second book. I now just need to get the third book, which I will do as soon as it's available in paperback because I think it was released earlier this year in hardback. It's set in 1794 Paris. The second book is set in London. Anything inspired by Frankenstein, I am happy to pick up and read. It's a YA time. It's not a hard read. It's easy to focus on. It's something that I like picking up when I'm really tired, say like I'm on an early shift. This is a fun, easy book to read for those times. We then have Jade City. This is by Fronda Lee and I was interested in this book. I know that this is not a priority for me to finish out the series. It is an urban fan to see slash mafia series. We're following a house 
of people that kind of control the jade within Janlon, which is a stone that enhances the abilities of people. And they have a rival gang at war with them. It's all sparking out into war. There's lots of things going on. You know that your characters are not going to be safe. I do know it's a really beloved series. I know lots of people love it. And I know the next couple books are meant to be really explosive. It's just not a series that I'm prioritising out of all of these series that I'm in the middle of, but I do want to finish it. It was an interesting time and it put me outside my comfort zone with reading something that urban fantasy and also mafia inspired because that's not something I really do. We then have Finley Donovan is Killing It by Ellie Cosmano and I loved this book. This was gifted to me by Naomi, so thank you so much. This was fantastic. It was so much fun. We're following Finley Donovan and she is approached because she gets missed classified <laughs> as a um, hit woman. Then we just see this series of events that falls out. It's hilarious, it's funny, it's ridiculous. It's a grand old time. Cannot wait to continue on. I have the second book on my shelves. I just keep saving it for a time when I need that bit of fun, but I, I need to stop doing it and just read it. Okay, the last couple before we do a bit of manga, we're finally getting towards the end of this. We have Agatha Christie, The Murder at the Vicarage. The reason why I continued this one is because it is the Miss Marple series. I am making my way for the Miss Marple series in order. It's a murder mystery series by Agatha Christie. I do want to read all of her works eventually but I'm starting off with Miss Marple. I really like it. Technically these are standalone which is something that I should say that books that are standalones within series I haven't included like Ocean's Echo, I need to read Winter's Orbit but they're standalones, they're not technically series so I haven't included that. Maybe I'll do a separate video on those if you're interested. So technically should this one be a part of it? I'm not sure. I wanted to quickly mention that I am still working on this. I had set out a goal for this year to read six Agatha Christie books this year. Yeah that hasn't happened so we're, we're doing good progress with that. We then have The Witcher series. I really really enjoyed this series. Series? No this book is a book this book is a short story which is a prequel to the series. I got the illustrated edition and I'm really really happy I did. I do want to get the second collection of short stories that's also in the illustrated edition and then I think the actual series of the books I might just collect in paperback. Hopefully it's still available. Polish fairy tales that have been given very darker twisted things but you can see the connections to tales such as Beauty and the Beast, Rapunzel and so you're just seeing an introduction into to the Witcher, who Geralt is, who Yennefer is, how it all ties together with these short stories. I have to admit this probably wasn't a series that I would have read if it wasn't for the Netflix show The Witcher. I really enjoyed it. Because of that it's made me start this, which I'm very pleased with. And the last bit of this is manga. Not loads, because last year I definitely read a lot more, but I've DNF'd a lot of those series. But let's quickly fly through the series that I'm continuing. So we have Moriarty the Patriot Volume 1. Obviously they're all going to be volume one. This one is a Sherlock Holmes inspired manga but we're focusing on Moriarty, how he became the professor, how he became the criminal mastermind that we see in the Sherlock Holmes book. We then have Sailor Moon which is a nostalgia read for me because I grew up watching the TV show and loved it so I wanted to start reading the manga. I think I'm going to swap into the deluxe manga editions. Finding this version is now harder because of the reprint and those deluxe editions are beautiful. This is a group of school girls defending the world from evil with love and justice. It is so much fun. We then have The Promised Neverland and this one we're following a group of children at an orphanage and the orphanage is hiding a very dark secret which these children discover and set about trying to escape. Tokyo Ghoul which you have seen me talk about so many times on this channel because I've been slowly making my way through this series. Humans and ghouls and ghouls need human flesh to survive. They also have other monstrous things about them and um, we have a main character who has one foot in the ghoul world, one foot in the human world and it creates this unique perspective on everything. And then we have Children of the Whales which is the most recent manga that I've started and I liked this one. I'm not sure it's a priority out of all these manga to continue for me, not at the minute, but it is one that I'm intrigued by. We're on the back of a mud whale and we have this civilization of people that believe that they're the last of humankind um, until they discover that maybe they're not. But that is it. That That's everything. <laughs> it's been so much. Like I can't believe I'm in the middle of 40 series. To be fair, some of these I have caught up on so those are fine but the leftover ones that I need to actually read, like I really need to read. I really need to prioritise continuing series, not starting new ones. I think what we're going to do is maybe at the end of year with my wrap up we're going to see how many series I've continued on with and how many I've started 
from this point and see whether it changes any of this. I've never tracked it before. I have to admit, I actually got this idea from Abby. So again, have a channel linked below. But she does this where she tracks her series and she does a check-in of where her series are at. I think it's every three months or something where she checks in with how many have I started, how many have I continued on with. And it's definitely something that I was like, oh, you know what? I should probably see how many I'm in the middle of. And then I did this. And it, the realization that, holy gods, do I need to read series is um yeah it was a bit ridiculous so you'll have to let me know if you track this sort of thing if you're interested in it and what series are you in the middle of what is your most favorite series that you cannot wait to continue and finish all those things let me know but thank you so much for watching if you've made it till the end you are a champion among champions because this is a long video <laughs> i think if you have made it this far then let's put a book stack emoji let's keep it nice and simple go over book stack emoji i am surrounded by them at the minute so book stack emoji if you made it this far and thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed it please do give it that thumbs up subscribe and comment those three things are so important to helping this channel grow anyone i've mentioned and my social media links will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the very next video.